for me, watching The Last Dance, um, it was interesting because obviously, you know, I am, you know, I don't want, I don't want to say how many years younger than you guys, but I am a few years younger than you guys. So, you know, obviously Kobe and LeBron and, you know, a lot of franchise players right now are, that's my childhood. That's, that's my memory of the NBA. You know, if you think about it, Kobe was in the league for what, 24 years, 25, I'm 20, I'm 25 years old, or I'm sorry, 20 years. Um, and I'm 25. So the majority of my career, I have not gotten to witness MJ and Scotty Pippen and all those things, all those players um, during that time. I've heard stories from my father and uncles, right? So for this, um, this series gave access that we didn't have before, especially knowing that MJ has always been reluctant to be, he's not as candid, he's not as transparent. He's in fact shied away from media for a long time. We haven't really heard him speak on topics. He actually used to get criticized about not speaking on certain things. And so this, um, I had seen that he had read that he conducted eight hours worth of interviewing, of interview. That's how much and he just sat there candidly with his, you know, glass of liquor, just talking from the heart. So for me, this has been pretty cool to see him in that light and to learn things that we just never knew about like it's, it's like the random little facts that you find out like Dennis Rodman and his craziness with women and just so many elements about it that you're getting to these players um for their personality and their habits and their experiences so it's been pretty pretty cool yeah it, it's it's crazy because you know once again watching this and I go back and like you know you mentioned about Jordan not really being and the media like that after retiring. But then now to go back and kind of watch, it was so overwhelming to deal with the media spot before before he left the, the first time. So all of the stuff that was going on, and then it was like, yo, y'all really tried to connect my father's death to my gambling and whatever it may or may not have been going on with that. And it's just like, yo, like I'm supposed to be at the at my pinnacle right now I'm the best player in basketball you know we're winning championships like it's nobody's business nobody could stop us but you guys are constantly beating me so the mental strain that Michael was dealing with at that time in addition to the physical of going deep into the playoffs every year to all, all the way to the absolute end and then coming right back the next year so that physical strain Plus the mental dealing with the media, yeah, he had enough. And when it was time, when he didn't have to do press conferences after games or just do random interviews, he says, "You know what? I'm good." And then now we get the we get to see though everything that was really going on. I thought the the last two episodes were the best two. I had tweeted out after both of them. Um, I thought the raw emotion, um, him, you know, being kind of moved to tears as he's talking about the dedication he had to put into becoming what he became. Whether you feel he's a goat or not. He made major sacrifices to get to that point. And, you know, they were teammates. He may have rubbed the wrong way. There may have been media types who didn't really like him. But ultimately, as I always say, we expect our athletes to be the best version of themselves on the court. And we don't really care what goes on off the court. We could front all we want, but at the end of the day, we don't care. We want that guy to drop his 30 points a night and perform when it's time to perform. And Mike did that every time he was on the court. As a diehard Nick fan, like I said, I have the utmost respect for Michael Jordan because I remember seeing him play night in, night out. There was no load management in the 90s. There wasn't this, oh, I'm taking a night off. Mike yeah, played every Robin. night. Well, Rodman was the exception, you know, but he played every night and he even made a point. I remember him him saying it during the second three-peat where he said, if I take a night off, there's a fan who paid for a ticket to come see me tonight who will never get to see me again. So it's my obligation to give them the best version of me. Wow. And, you know, and uh, I believe it was episode uh, six, when they talked about the, the Jordan ones, when he put him back on for his last game at the Garden, he literally was playing with blisters and his feet bleeding and still went out and dropped 40 plus points because he knew this is my last time at the Garden. This is the last time New York City is going to get to see me in person. So let me give them the best version of me. Yeah. And you know what? When you, um, Tripp was speaking about, you know, him being criticized in, in the media or not, when he didn't have to speak in front of media, he didn't. If you think about it in 2020, you know, social media has provided these athletes to have their own, essentially their platforms are like their own media net, you know, platform. Because if you have, you know, 10 million followers on your Twitter, on your Instagram, that is the numbers that 
news outlets used to have back in the day, right? So now you can go and defend your honor. You can you can speak your mind. We get to know these players in ways that back in the day it was just a quick soundbite that can be misconstrued or a newspaper article. Where now social media has changed the game. So you know we would probably be saying those same things about LeBron and Kobe, but they're hopping on Instagram live, dancing and talking. So we're getting, you know, we're getting the opportunity to see them in a in a more personal way. I think I think a lot of things Mike had to deal with were very unfair, um, and even it, I think a lot of things that LeBron deals with now was very unfair. Uh, you know, again, we expect these yeah. guys to be the utmost professionals after some of the worst losses of their career. You know, they could have a devastating loss, and it's like they've got to put that to the side and be ready to speak to the media within 20 minutes. And anything LeBron tweets about or, or posts on Instagram gets dissected to the point of somebody thinking like they know more about him than what they really do. Um, for Mike, though, I just think that was very unfortunate that he he had done it the right way. And then it got to a point where the media or certain people within the media wanted to pick at his armor so bad that they wanted to find reasons why he wasn't a good guy. You know, to to talk about him and his dad going to Atlantic City the night before a playoff game, there's no crime in him spending the night with his dad and, and hanging out and just blowing off some steam after a playoff loss. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. You know, there's nothing. This is a guy who was worth millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars at that time. If he if he decides to lose $20,000 on the golf course, that's his business. Why are we worried about the amount of money that he's gambling? You know, yeah. and then when his dad passes away, it's like, again, they wanted to try to tie it to him. And, and you know, the type of guilt he must have been living with to hear people say those type of things. You know yeah. what I'm saying? His dad died. He was 31 years old. He was still a very young man. Wow. For people to associate that his dad might have died because of his gambling, like that's yeah. unfair. And that, and that's something that he probably had, that's a cloud he probably had to walk around with for a little while, even amongst his family. Cause I'm sure there were some people who probably even wondered like, damn, is it connected? Like, what did you get our father involved in? Yeah, yeah. Cause people definitely will start to speculate, right. especially in the family. And knowing that he was gambling, he did have you no know, debts he was paying here and there from losses. Now granted he had the money, but you know when people when people lose their lives, especially in that type of way, you know it can cause people to say, "Wait a minute, did he? Because I know he did all this dude money, and I know he he was doing this." But again, you know him losing twenty thousand playing golf is equivalent of us losing five hundred playing a dice game. You know what I'm saying? So he yeah. got that. He, he... I never understand why people um, criticize the type of things that any celebrity spends money on when their paycheck is something that many people will never see in their life. Exactly. So it's like pennies. Well, the, <laughs> the, 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 the irony, and that's a great point, Em, is that an athlete or a, a, an actor will get criticized when we find out what they're getting paid, right? So LeBron is getting 30 plus million dollars and there'll be that group of people, oh, that's, he's not worth that. That's too much money for someone to be making. And then on the flip side is like, so you're mad at he's making that money, and then you're mad at how he's spending that money. Yeah, like, like it's his money. Like, what do? Why are you counting that man's pockets? Yeah, you know, it, it's it's unfortunate. Um, like I said, to me, the last two were the best because I thought Mike was at his rawest and just letting us know like what went into it. Um, you know, the fight with Steve Curry and him saying, you know, I, I was immediately remorseful that it got to that point because I wasn't mad at Steve Curry. I was mad at the coach. Um, but. Again, you know, there's a certain mindset you got to have to be great. And a lot of people don't have it. Uh, a lot of people will never understand it. I'm not saying that I fully understand it because I, I probably would have been a guy who after a couple championships, I probably wanted to spend more time with the family and just kick back. But yeah. he had that drive to be like, no, I need more. I, I want more victories. I want more accomplishments. And to me, I always say people forget, you know, I, I kind of joked about it when I said Mike was smoking and drinking and gambling and still winning championships. Michael Jordan won six NBA championships, won two gold medals. He won a college championship. Like Michael Jordan, when it when the when the lights were the brightest, he performed. You were not gonna beat him in that moment. Yeah. And even if he didn't come back after baseball, he would have still been looked at as one of the greatest of all time. Maybe not necessarily the GOAT, because I know the extra three rings and all other accolades, those couple of years go along with it. But he's still going into the Hall of Fame first ballot. So, you know, he could have just been like, you know, we'll play baseball. And then when they had that little strike, I'm just retire and stay at home and spend this time with the family. You know, I don't have my dad here, so I want to give my family a little bit more time. But, no, he, he had that itch. He wanted to go back. He wanted to, you know, to play and, and, and win more. And that's what he did, and he did it better than anybody else. This is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Real 
Real 